A surprising message to Rolaids users. Tums neutralizes one-third more acid than Rolaids. Watch this familiar demonstration. One Rolaids and one Tums tablet are added to stomach acid. Both neutralize the acid. But on those occasions, when your stomach has even this much more excess acid, Tums can still absorb it. Rolaids can't. Because tablet for tablet, Tums neutralizes one-third more acid than Rolaids. For acid indigestion and heartburn, take Tums. Everybody talks about what Dallas did for professional football with their variegated offense. I say to you verily, folks, that's what Dallas did to football. They brought the girls onto the field. They brought Flipper back to the Orange Bowl. Hoo-hoo! <laughs> All right. Get into your position there, big tight end. Uh, Derlin Moore is in there at the defensive right tackle, number 74, the first time he's played all season long. And Simpson has come in to run in the backfield uh, for Green Bay. Bill, you know what they have to do? You know, it, they, Nate Simpson, they, they, by the way. Yeah, Nate Simpson. They, they say it's 85 degrees. Well, down on that playing field, it's more like 95 or 100 degrees. And as, as you see, both teams are freely substituting. The backs are coming in. Wide receivers are substituting, and even some defensive linemen. The Packers with a 14-10 lead and a slot left. Middleton and Simpson are the backs. And Whitehurst is game enough to throw. The rushes on him, and he gave it to Middleton, who smartly let it flow between his fingers. Elois Grooms and uh, Derlin Moore got a good rush that time. and uh, it's It was Landers, by the way, Hank. Go ahead. Please forgive me. I stepped on your line. Yeah. Watch the rush here. Elois Grooms. The left defensive end, and Derlin Moore, 74, coming up the middle. Really, I'm surprised he threw that ball into the traffic because Pat Hughes was very close by and and uh, almost. First wants to throw his backs go out. He's taken down by his own man. He got clipped from behind by one of his own people. Mel Jackson. Well, that will happen. I mean, you know, after Come all. Come on, don't defend him, lawyer. Just because, I mean, the, you know, the, he's your man. The defensive line is paid to put the rush on. If they happen to jostle an offensive lineman into the quarterback, it is perfectly legal. And I might, might add that Derlin Moore, 74, is very quick coming off the ball. He provides some strong inside pressure, a lot more than they had at that position before. Here's an outstanding kicker, David Beverly, back for the pack at about his own nine. He should boot it from about the 12. They don't get a big rush on him, and he gets the ball. Oh, what a kick. Turned it over. Holy cow, did he get it. Chandler looking for running room. They hem him in. Kiss him goodbye. Fifty-five yard kick. Oh, what a beauty. And the pack leads it 14 to 10 in a marvelous football game in Milwaukee. You can't have Whitney, he's mine. He's elegant, sleek, stands on his own two feet. He's an interwoven man, and he's got socks appeal. Brian belongs to me. He's colorful, casual, knows how to put his feet up and enjoy his success. He wears interwoven socks, and he's got socks appeal. Lawrence is taken by me. He's rugged, always plays to win, and he's got socks appeal. Interwoven socks, they give every man socks appeal. I like pickles, but they don't like me. Send your stomach some Digel. I like pizza, but it doesn't like me. Send your stomach some Digel. Digel's special combination of antacid and anti-gas ingredients gives you fast, gentle relief from acid indigestion, heartburn, and gas in just minutes. I like hot dogs, but they don't like me. Send your stomach some Digel. First and ten for the pack, or forgive me, for the Saints, back on about the 16-yard line. Back set in an eye formation. They're split. They, they should run to the right. Ran it up the middle. Well, it was the right side of the center because of the overshifted defense of the left side of the, the formation. They were in an eye formation that time, and that's the spot to hit because you try to isolate the man over the center and let him run either way. Would right you believe left. that cast on Dobler's hand, Bill? They ought to outlaw his left arm. 
I would hate to be a defensive lineman because you know you're going to get that clubbed in your face sooner or later. Looks the like only reason I'm not saying anything is I don't want him asking me after the game. You're big enough to take care of him, Bono, not I. They look as if they're going to a zone or a blitz. No. Time for Manning, and he screams oh. it out left. Looks and Goldbreath, who can run, has himself a first down. Up at about the 30. we got to watch the clock, men. 201. We're going to get a stoppage of play right now. I'm going to leave you with one thought. I think we're going to go away for a moment. If you think you're a Packer fan or a football fan, tell me this. Who played the other end when Don Hudson played for Green Bay? Do you remember? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, I'm not that old. Amos Alonzo Stag. Wrong. <laughs> we'll tell you. Come back. Have you ever wondered where major industries do their shopping? When the automotive industry shops for car thermostats, when the aircraft industry shops for lightweight special metals, when the leisure time industry shops for true temper golf shafts and garden tools, when a number of industries shop for gases and chemicals, they're all drawn to one source. The source? Allegheny Ludlam Industries, the supermarket. Here's to good friends. Here we go. Tonight is kind of special. Hey, we almost gave up and sent out for peace. Sorry. All I could get were lobsters and low and brown. All I could get were lobsters and low and brown. <laughs> well, it's the last party of the summer. I figured I'd shoot the words. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Well, like the song says, here's to good friends. <laughs> The coach was giving me a bad time last night as we viewed films of both New Orleans and Green Bay for well over two hours. And I finally decided to get back at him with a trivia thing. So you don't know who the other end was with Hudson, Henry, huh? No, I really don't. I remember that Cecil Isbell, my old coach at Purdue, was one of, was a great quarterback about that same time. What if I laid the name of Milt Ganton buying on you? That's terrific. That really is something. <laughs> Oh, come on, Nick. Give me something better than that. You told did, me this. Did, did he play for the Buffalo Bills later? Later, he played for the Buffalo Bills under the name of Jack Kemp. <laughs> that was the name he used. <laughs> All right, we got a first and 10 at about the 30. New Orleans trailing 14 to 10. Coach, what are they doing a two minute drill? Tell us. Well, they, they have plenty of time before they get involved in it, uh, worrying about timeouts. But they're going to try to get the ball downfield as much as they can, and they got to save one timeout. So if they get close enough, they can kick a field goal. He got your man, Tinker Owens. Yes, he did. He he just ran a simple out, a very simple out pattern. He went right down at the defensive back and uh, drove him back. Archie put the ball right on the numbers. Plenty of room, a, a big cushion there by the defensive back, and it's good for a first down. Throw it again this time to Goldbreath, who looks for the sideline, gets it out to stop the clock. You can see the official over there motioning for stoppage of the clock with a minute and 28 seconds remaining. Nick, uh, we were talking before about Dover's arm. How come he's allowed to wear something like that? Well, I think he still has some sort of an injury to his left arm. What did he do, bite himself? I, I don't know. I think he got hurt in the woods of Wyoming some, some time, but... Anyways, he still is nursing an injury, so therefore the officials allow him to wear it, much to the chagrin of the defensive lineman. A minute 28, first half. Regular set, what they call a pro set. Manning with time. Not too much of a rush, he has time, he goes to the, oh, low breath with those great hands, drop the ball. You know, it's, it's unusual with the great hands that Tony has. He'll drop a lot of balls that are very easy to catch because he wants to run with it before he really gets possession, and I think that's what happened that time. You notice the stat over here, Henry? 13 out of 19 for Manning, not too bad. Nick? Yes. No, that's not too bad. I mean, last week he had the same type of stats, 15 of 22 with no interception, so he's right on track for today also. This kid was picked the quarterback of the quarter century and the Southeastern Conference, Archie Manning. He had a day against Alabama, not to be believed, and he is seemingly coming into his own right now. They're gonna run it. Muncie fumbled it, Green Bay fumbles it. Who got it? Goldberg got the ball. Conrad. Conrad Goldberg got the ball. It still belongs to New Orleans. Is that one of the plays you put in the book last year? <laughs> they put that in this year. 
It's called the cast sweep. He swept it in with his casted hand. <laughs> Here we I go, running it. right, running right. Chuck Muncie. You see Dobler out in front. And he gets a good block. The ball is jarred loose by Willie Buchanan. Anderson's got a chance to get it, misses. So does Barzalowskis, he misses. And Dobler wi finally winds up with the football. Looks like a greased pig, never mind a pigskin. It was very slippery. Nick, who took the timeout? New Orleans must yeah. have, obviously, huh? What New do they Orleans got left did. now? What do they got left? They got two times out left? You know, everybody wonders, like in two minutes, how come all of a sudden, of course not in this case because Manning's had a great day passing the football, but in many games, teams who can do nothing offensively all day long come into two minutes left in the first half, and all of a sudden they look, they look like they have the greatest passing attack in the history of the NFL. That's because the defenses are playing off a lot more, and they're giving them the run, and they're giving them the short passes. And this is what's happening now, though, with Manning. He has a lot of room to throw the football. Nick, in the history of tennis, there have been some magnificent rivalries. Donald Budge and Baron Gottfried von Kram, a man named Austin and a man named Perry. I doubt there's ever been a better one than Jimmy Connors and Bjorn Borg. And they will be right here on CBS right after the game. Also, Chrissy and Pam in the finals at Flushing Meadows. What do they do? They double up on the outside. Manning's going to get it from behind. He's still got the ball off. And it was almost intercepted. Holy cow. John Anderson of Michigan couldn't hold on to the ball. Hank, give us the technical. Well, they had a, they had a blitz. Anderson is coming. And he's forced to throw the ball, you see. Look at Anderson on the ground. Should, yeah, he should have should have made that Bill, catch. Bill, that was that man, 78, Ezra Johnson, who last week had five sacks against Detroit. He was the one who really applied the crunch to Manning. And Manning got up very, very slowly after that hit. Get the picture on Johnson. 6'4", 250, runs the 40 and 4'5". What was he waiting for? Oh, can he run? Do they come at him now? They got a blitz. Another blitz, but they, they picked, picked it up. They picked it off good. Steve Luke. Steve Luke made the tackle, number 46. Archie, Archie did a good job of, of uh, getting rid of the football. Watch Weaver come. He's picked up nicely. Archie throws the ball right on the numbers. Tackle there by 46, Steve Luke. He threw it to his tight end, and they got a rush now because there are 44 seconds remaining. Manning's got to put it up. He looks, and he hits his man. It's a first down. And smartly going out of bounds, number 33 for New Orleans is Mike Strawn. Mike Strawn from Miami, Bill. I knew him when he played high school down there. He's called the Bloodhound. You know why he's called the Bloodhound? Go, Nick. Because he works for the police department in the offseason. Watch, they flood, the, they flood the weak side area here, and he pops wide open behind the linebacker. Gain of 15. A, a missed tackle, and he finally hangs on enough, but Strawn is able to get out of bounds. Here's your buddy Dobler, Nick. Oh, Conrad, big investment man, owns hotels, owns distributorship, now he's gonna own the turf. Somebody just stuck an elbow right in his mouth. Barzalaskis gave him a little facial. Manning, lots of time. He, oh, beautiful tackle, an incompleted pass. I was almost about to say complete. You know, you threw me off, Nick. Muncie is a criminology major, and no, they put no. in a bloodhound That's after right. him? A bloodhound, Strawn, comes in to look after Muncie. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, in a moment like this, I know how serious it is for you, but it's still just a football game, isn't you it, Henry? <laughs> you, don't see, you don't see that happen very much. Ike Harris dropped that football. It was right at the numbers, and uh, he was jarred loose from the football. 30 seconds remaining in the first half of what has been a very exciting first half of play. They've got Strong back there with Goldbreath. They split both wide receivers. Manning on a trap up the middle. Strong picks up some yardage. Is he going for a field goal? What was his point? No, that was a good play because he's been throwing so much. They're coming off the ball very strongly to, to uh, rush the passer. Uh, Archie evidently felt that a trap would slow down the rush. It might be a big play. It was actually a very good call. Okay, 23 seconds again. The Saints go for a timeout. They trail in this football game 14 to 10. 
You remember Henry and Nick Bonacotti said before the game, well, why don't you tell us? What did you expect before the game? I absolutely expected ball control type of football by Green Bay. That they were running it would be something like Woody Hayes's three yards in a cloud of dust. They surprised me, maybe because of Lofton, number 80. I mean, the guy's done everything except sell programs today for the Green Bay Packers in the first half. The other way, I felt that St. Louis, you know, uh, New Orleans would be wide open, which they are, because they have all kinds of weapons coming off the bench to replace the starters. Coach, what do you think? Well, the, the one thing that Green Bay has to do, I, I'm sure they felt going into the game, they know that, uh, that New Orleans has the capacity to score points, and I, I probably feel that they felt that they had to score some points to win themselves, and that's, John, I think I this is what happened. Okay. Time back in. We've got a third down and four yards to go, 23 seconds. Another moment of truth for Manning. Interception by Anderson. He's going to run it out. He could have gotten it out to the 20, takes it to the 10. What a big play by the Michigander. He was trying to hit Henry Childs on the inside. There it is for you, Coach. You know, and the other thing, Richard Marty was open to the outside, but Archie threw the ball inside with the anticipation of hitting Henry Childs. He hit him for a touchdown last week. He automatically went to Henry, but he was covered, and uh, the rest, of course, you see with an interception uh, by John the Anderson. fine linebacker, hey, John Nicky, Anderson. what is the outside linebacker doing in the middle? Is that where his drop is? Well, that's right. What he had to do, they probably had a man for man to the inside on Henry Childs, trying to give the strong safety some help. So he just came right with him. Galbraith was wide open in the flat. He missed him also. 13 seconds remaining. The clock stopped on the change of possession. So Whitehurst will have to put it in play. And he goes to Middleton, who gets a bit of yardage. Did I get the wrong guy? Yeah. No, I thought it was Middleton. It's Walter Landers. Walter Landers. And my friends, that is it. The first half is now history. And in a very exciting half of play, the Green Bay Packers on two catches by James Lofton lead the New Orleans Saints 14 to 10. This used to be filled with 4 million gallons of oil, but we've just been using too much of it. Perhaps we should use the yellow pages more. It tells us who sells what we need, where they're located, and when they're open. So there's less driving around wasting precious gas. The yellow pages, it's not an empty promise. When you need to know who, what, where, when, and why, let your fingers do the walking through the Bell System Yellow Pages. Are we going to be the bowling champs tonight? Yeah! Are we having a problem? Yeah. Did I forget my press stone? Yeah. Take out the old put in the two. Put in the press stone, press stone two. Protect against freeze-ups and corrosion. Take out old, weak antifreeze and put in America's most trusted antifreeze, press stone two. Take out the old, put in the two. Put in the press stone, press stone two. And when you flush your cooling system, use press stone super flush. These are two of today's newest razors. The one on the right is the new Norelco rechargeable rotary razor. This one has two blades and pivots up and down. The new Norelco 36 blades in three adjustable floating heads and a new shaving angle. Both give you a close shave. But the new Norelco rechargeable lets you walk away from soap and water. Of course, they do give you one thing Norelco doesn't. Gotcha. The new Norelco rechargeable rotary razor. Still no gotcha. The Belmont, 1977. You saw it on CBS Sports. The Belmont, 1978. You saw it on CBS Sports. Next Saturday, CBS Sports Spectacular presents the Cup and a classic matchup of Seattle Slew, Affirmed, and Alidar. Next Saturday, you'll also see the record makers with Olympic champion Vasily Alexia. Sunday morning, you'll see. You saw it on CBS Sports. And now we take you to CBS Sports Control in New York. Hi, welcome back to New York. And the rule changes appear to have made a difference. And Bart Starr and the Green Bay Packers are an improved football team, aren't they? Let me take you right around the league and start with last night. Detroit beating Tampa Bay 15-7 was the final score last night. 
Dallas gave up a touchdown to the Giants on a 94-yard march, and then the Cowboys struck back 21-7, about a minute to go in the first half. The Washington Redskins have just scored for the third time. They lead the Eagles 21-10, less than a minute to go in the first half in that game. The contest you're watching at the half, Packers ahead of New Orleans, 14-10 at the half. Cincinnati and Cleveland, the Bengals shutting out the Browns, that game in the second quarter. Seattle and Pittsburgh, two touchdown passes by Terry Bradshaw in that game in the second quarter. And Houston has kicked a field goal against Kansas City. They now lead the Chiefs by a score of three to nothing. Dante Pastorini is playing quarterback today. Let's check in on the Dallas Giant game. A lot of action early. The Cowboys came in favored by 11 points, and they did nothing to disappoint early as they are. Staubach driving down, going to Newhouse. And so right now, it is 21 to 7. And Irv, how about the Eagles and the Redskins? Brent, I'm watching that game right now. The Eagles on the 30-yard line with about 35 seconds to go in the half, and they trail the Washington Redskins by a score of 21 to 10. And Joe Thives has been hot. But this is Ron Jaworski, the quarterback here for the Eagles, going to Harold Carmichael, who catches a short pass. That's his 82nd consecutive pass completion in the National Football League. Consecutive game, Robert Montgomery. From Abilene Christian, perhaps the fastest player on the Eagles squad, goes over for a touchdown. The Eagles take an early 7-0 lead. Joe Theismann's had a pretty hot hand all day today, hitting John Riggins here on a third and three play. Riggins goes down to the 30-yard line, setting up a scoring opportunity for the Redskins. Theismann rolling out to his right, can't find anybody, goes in himself, he scores. It's all tied now, 7-7. Gene Fugit's had a big day, Brent. You know, the tight ends have been very effective all year this year. Fugit, number 84, from his tight end spot, goes in. Touchdown. Denton Washington takes a 14-10 lead, and he's not finished yet. Just before the half, Fugit again, quick post, touchdown, and Washington leads 21-10 with about 20 seconds left to go in half. So we are just a week and a half into this new season, but it's obvious we're going to have a lot more touchdown passes this year. And the NFL today will continue on CBS right after these messages from your local stations. Join Phyllis George for a weekly look at what's new in the sparkling world of people coming September 18th on CBS. How long will we be? Okay, you'll let me know when we're ready to start, huh? What do you say? Okay, then you'll count down. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, now I can get you. Do me a... Yeah, now you want me to throw it to him, don't you, to Hank? All right, right, run me down. Yeah. Bill Mazur again from Milwaukee's County Stadium with Nick Bonacani and Hank Stram and those numerals on the numericals on the screen don't really tell a whole story. It's been a very, very exciting first half. Green Bay leading at 14 to 10. Nicholas, what'd you think? Well, I think it's a complete turnaround for the Packer offense. I mean, just look at David Whitehurst. Last week, he threw nine passes for 31 yards. Already he has 125 yards, completing six out of eight. And the big guy, of course, is Lofton. God almighty, the speedster out of Stanford. He has 89 yards on two receptions. He has two touchdowns. The longest was 47 yards. You get him the ball, Bill, and all he has to do is get one shade of a block, and he's in the end zone. He's that type of a player. So it's been really a surprising Green Bay offense. The thing that has really mostly surprised me, I didn't realize they had that varied an offense. They didn't show that varied an offense last week against the Lions. They ran at them today. They're really putting the ball in the air. I think you're looking at a healthier Whitehurst. That's the reason. And they're relying on their backs. You know, Middleton is really a better than average back, and he's surprising everybody running the football. On the other hand, Manning is doing terrific, too. 15 to 24 for 130 yards. He does have one interception. Muncie has 44 yards on the day, and so does Galbraith has 27. So it's a good, really, Man Manning is having a superior day, but uh, it's Green Bay ahead. You know, a couple of years ago, they played this kind of game. Hank Stram told me it drove him crazy. Hank, 
is out there right now with a lovely gal, Jerry Starr, Bart's wife, and Henry, it's all yours. You talk about the beauty and the beast. This is what the situation is right now. I'm, I'm standing here with very pretty Cherry Starr, the wife of Bart Starr. And I'm amazed, uh, Cherry, that you sat behind us for a while during the course of the game and how co calm and collected you were oh. during the course of this contest. I was making a little noise there, Hank. <laughs> I was well, so excited. Well, you know, it, it's uh, unusual that a wife uh, of, of a football coach would be up in a press box like you are. Phyllis was always too nervous to get up there. She made so much noise that uh, people had to stay away, but uh, you handled it terrifically, terrifically well. And what do you feel about the game so far? I oh. wish you, I bet you think it'd be better to end it right now, wouldn't well, you? Well, yes, but we're going to win it. I'm so excited about our players. They, they have so much potential. We don't have a lot of depth, but we sure have some wonderful kids out there playing football for us, and I'm so thrilled about the season, the way things are going for us. Well, I talked to Bart the other day, and he was very excited about the fact that the squad was playing with a lot of enthusiasm, oh, a lot are. of excitement. They were yes. making things happen. And very frankly, I'm very surprised that they played so well, especially offensively, in this first half. They did a terrifically outstanding job, and I know that Bart calls the plays from the sideline, and that's yes. reminiscent mm -hmm. of what, what he did when he was a player. Well, they but have he's to making them up good, doing a good too, job. Though, you know, the players have to execute them regardless of what's called. Oh, there's so no question about I'm that. I'm proud of what they're doing. Well, you know, the excitement of playing here in Milwaukee, we played here several years ago in 1976 to be exact and we lost the game 32 to 27 in a wild scoring game that is very uh, much like the game that we're seeing here so far in the first half. Yes, I remember that well. I remember being in New Orleans the last couple of years. Well, <laughs> we'd like to forget the one last year, but we can't. You went ahead of us uh, last year early and we finally tried to play catch up and you wound up, wound up winning the game 24 to 20. Yes, you gave us a hard time. Well, what do you think as a coach's wife, what do you think is going to happen in the second half, Jerry? Oh, I think we're going to come back stronger the second half. I think we've made a few little mental errors that we're going to correct during this half, and I think we're coming back real, real strong. Okay, and Jerry. I want to say hi to Bart Jr. at the University of Alabama. He's watching on cable TV today, so I'm so glad he's getting to see the game. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. Nice of you to take time, and we'll go back, back up in the press box to Bill Mazur. Thank you, Hank. Thank you. Henry, thank you very much. Uh, you know, Nicholas, that, that has always been an interesting point for me, is what a wife goes through while her husband is out there, because he can work it off. We got a ball game. Don't you go away. Look at Sears, and you'll see the Travel Knit Vested Suit at a $29 savings. Now just $89.99, it's the suit that keeps on looking good. Watch how the knit fabric resists wrinkling to make sure the fresh, neat look is a look that lasts. Then take another look at that savings. Sears Travel Knit Vested Suit, just $89.99. Whenever you're looking for great menswear values, look at Sears. On sale through September 16th in Sears Men's Store. Owens Corning would like to help you understand insulation R values. R stands for resistance to heat flow. It's the right way to measure insulating power, not thickness. Look, it takes about 18 feet of stone to give you an R value of R19, but only 15 inches of wood and 6 inches of this Owens Corning fiberglass insulation. So check for R value. The higher the R value, the greater the insulating power. Want to know about insulation? Ask Owens Corning. Go! Right. Sit! Go! Okay. I'm Drew Pearson of the Dallas Cowboys. It was here on this field at South River High School that I decided football was going to play a pretty important part in my life. You begin making some pretty important decisions about your life when you're a teenager. You choose your college, plan your future, you're probably going to make the decision on using or not using alcohol. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but before you make a choice, you ought to have the facts on alcohol. There's a booklet, especially written for teenagers, that'll give you these facts. It's called Winning Decisions. So when you do make a decision, it'll be a responsible one. To get it, write to the Education Commission of the States, Box 687, Denver, Colorado. That's Education Commission of the States, Box 687, Denver, Colorado. When you make responsible decisions, you're a winner in the biggest game of all, life. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Counselor, we're going to have a look at the stats, and you uh, give us uh, an analysis of them. Well, just look at them. They're even. 
And that's the, really the, the, the story in the game. It's 14 to 10, and the stats are 186 yards. Look at it, very even there. The one thing that's not up there is third down efficiency. That's you know how you convert the third down situations. Both teams are 50%. The Saints are five for 10, and the Packers are three for six. So they are really converting the third downs. When, when teams are not scoring, the third down conversions are not there. So overall, just look at them, you see that it's a very, very close ball game all the way. Unfortunately, in most movies that portray football games, the coach at halftime spends more of his time in exhortation than he does in apparent strategy. And that confuses me. Hank, you got a team at halftime. You're going to stand there and give them, do it for so-and-so. What are you going to tell them? What would you have told the team? Well, number one, that's a very overrated phase of coaching. Uh, you don't have very much time in a locker room, and so you better use your time very carefully and very wisely. You wind up talking to individual groups with the individual coaches, and then you get together as a total team for about two minutes before you go out uh, in the second half. You want to make sure that you recapture what you went into the ball game, thinking that you can do. Make sure that you uh, uh, stress the importance of playing every play with the utmost of your capacity, making sure that you don't make mistakes, that kind of thing, but you don't rant and rave unless the situation calls for it, and that doesn't happen very often. How often do you change a game plan, Hank? You have to change a game plan whenever you feel it's, it's necessary for you to do so. You like to, you like to feel that the things you studied all week long and to prepare for a game are gonna be workable and successful, but sometimes they're not, and as a result, you have to make adjustments as the game goes along. Hank, though, Go ahead. In my mind, though, if you're, you know, if you're a coach and you have to get away from your game plan, isn't this exactly what the other team wants you to do? Because you're going to things that you haven't practiced all week. Well, this is true, but I say, if you, for example, you're going to change the approach if you're way behind. Is the point I was trying to make. You might have to do that if you're way behind. Basically, you know, obviously, you'd like to stay with what you plan to do, but those are times where you have to have enough flexibility to make the change if you have to. Or you have Lofton, the wide receiver, right from Green Bay. Now, he, he's the guy who's really killing the Saints, all right? Well, now, we're, we're going to see him. He's going to make some catches here. Now, you go into the ball game. You have the rule change that prevents you from hitting him five yards after he gets five yards down the field. So now, how do you defend against this guy? I mean, he's got the great speed. He has the great hands, and he can get all the way in a hurry. Well, number one, you have to spend more time double covering him, doing something with coverage in the second half. There was a great illustration of a misdirection play, and they threw back away from the grain. Uh, Clarence Chapman slipped and fell on the play, but definitely the Saints are going to have to spend more time on more coverage with him in the second half to stop him because uh, they can't do it with one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I was just thinking, we saw Dick Nolan in Bart Star a moment ago. It must be tough for Star, a living legend, a memory of all the greatness of the Packer teams, the halcyon days of yore, this capacity crowd watching and saying, Bart, do for them what you did for Fuzzy Thurston and <laughs> Jerry Kramer, and Bart saying, oh, Lord, help us, please. All right, Chester Markov puts the foot into the ball. A fumble back on the 10. Poor Clarence Chapman. How about it, man? Well, Ch Clarence, you know, is a very... Oh, the Yankees 3-0 over Boston, and they continue. Whew. I want to tell you something, man. Living as I do in that section of the country, I want to tell you that th that's interesting. But i got to ask you about Chapman. Tell me about him. Well, Chapman is a very serious, conscientious guy, and he, sometimes he has, if he makes a mistake in a game, he is prone to brood about it a little bit and worry about it more than he should. And uh, if he's not careful, that's what could happen on that kind of a play. New Orleans is going uphill right now. They trail 14 to 10. They're setting a wing right. And Mr. Manning gives it off to the bread and butter man, Goldbreath. Well, were they waiting for him? I think they ran to the weak side, didn't they? Yes, and I was going to allude to that because the defense, again, was shifted strong to their right. And Archie changed the play at the line of scrimmage and ran to the left. And uh, John Anderson made a great play, number 60. Bill, do you think that that first round Jaff draft choice was worth it already? He already yeah. has the key interception of the game. He brings down a guy like Galbraith with one hand. And that's a tough chore. Nick, that kid was highly regarded at Michigan. Incidentally, he's a marvelous kicker, too. They're set in a far. Backs to the weak side. Muncie over the middle. What's the strategy now? What are they probing for? They're just trying to move the ball and make first downs. That's the way you win. You make first downs, and that's the way you move the ball down the field. This is what they're trying to do. 
They give it to Muncie on a straight ahead shot. Nick, you're calling the plays on defense. What were you looking for? Well, right now, I'll be looking for either a run or a play action pass. The key right here, but my key would be the fullback, because I was either look for him to carry the football or there a play action pass to him to try to free up the weak back. That fullback is number 34, Goldbreath. 42 is Muncie, and Manning's got a third. And medium yardage as Anderson does a little fooling around. Harris takes coming in line. Manning is going to throw. Bad pass. Thank you, Drew Forley. Yes, he did. He got. He felt some pressure that time. Dave Roller, number 74. Go ahead, Hank, as we watch. It's watch 74. Archie goes goes back into the pocket. Dave Roller, number 74, gets some penetration. And here you see Barzalaskis coming. You see Butler coming, but you see. Inside roller came before Archie was ready to throw the ball, and he threw a poorly thrown ball incomplete. They're in a kicking situation. Just for everybody's information, roller beat number 66, Conrad Dobler, who was considered the best offensive lineman on the Saints. Steve Odom is the single safety now. No more of using one of the other backs, Howard Sampson. They go to Odom, one of the best. Oh, a near block of the punt. And here's Mr. Odom, who can fly going to the far side and looking for blocks. New Orleans shuts them off a little, and they get him. Eric Felton, number 20, had a shot at him, but didn't, didn't take it. 38-yard punt by Tom Blanchard. Watch number 82 right now of the Packers. Watch him come right now. You know, he took a good course. Uh, he, you have to try to block the kick about three yards in front of the punter, and that's what he did that time, but he missed. That's Paul Kaufman who almost blocked the punt. Kansas State man. The deep back, that's Middleton. Who can he get see doodle? Good blocking by Tim Stokes. And Darrell Goforth, they run away from the overshifted defense again. There's Tim, Tim Stokes making a block. Goforth making a block. He's, Middleton's doing an excellent job of running inside, and he fights for the extra yardage. Joe Campbell, number 73, and Pat Hughes finally make the tackle, but he makes the first down. Nick, tell me this. The young man is playing with his arm in a sling. I'm talking about Whitehurst. Is there any danger involved? Well, thank God it's not his passing guard. <laughs> but is there any danger involved? Not really, because it's the, the sling has a chain on it, which restricts the movement of his shoulder. The shoulder raises above a certain degree, then it'll be painful to him. But he can't raise it above there, so it's harmless. He has what is called in sports intestinal fortitude. They they fake that option play again, Hank. You know, interesting fact: uh, Cecil Lisbell, who was a great passer for the Green Bay Packers many many years ago also wore the same kind of a chain, the same kind of a brace when he played for the Packers. And we had a fine quarterback at Purdue University by, by the name of Bobby DeMoss, and he used exactly the same kind of a brace when he played for us at Purdue in 48. So there's no danger? No danger whatsoever. Okay. Who, who is that great defensive end for the Jets? Jerry Philbin. He wore that, that same type of a, a, yeah. a I'll, brace. I'll tell you a little story about Mr. Scram and Mr. Philbin. Okay, Whitehurst sets that ball club second and long. He's going to go deep. He's got Lofton. He overthrew him. You were mentioning Philbin. Jerry played with that in a playoff game against Kansas City. The year Kansas City goes on to win the Super Bowl, right? Right. You know who they run the first three plays at, Kansas City? Tell him, Henry. The man with the brace on his arm. At the brace. <laughs> we wanted to make sure it was working all right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't care who had the brace. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 if it were possible to euphemistically phrase what Philbin said to Dawson, I would tell you about that particular situation. All right, we got a third and eight. They're in that slot right with a tight end set to the left side. No flex, a straight four by New Orleans. Mr. Whitehurst wants to throw it. He throws underneath. Barty Smith has got the first down. Oh. Henry's picking him apart. Yes, he is, and, and you know the bad thing, the thing that makes the play successful is the, the lack of pass rush. There's no pass rush to speak of. Whitehurst has plenty of time. Look at the time he's got in the pocket. He hits Barty Smith, number 33, in the flat. Fetterspiel is over in pursuit, tries to strip the ball loose, and finally makes the tackle, number 58. Nice call, Hank. This is Whitehurst. 
as he fades back. Boy, does Bart Starr love Whitehurst. Woo. He I hangs him in the pocket, and he just is very cool under pressure. There was no pressure then. Here he comes. Oh. That's Mr. Middleton. Nick, you're a little young, but I'll tell you, there was a back for the New York Giants by the name of Tuffy Lehmans, who had just that kind of action, Hank. Watch Middleton again run to the outside with a right, Mel Jackson 71 pulling on the play. But you know, he's got the great capacity. If he smells any kind of a seam, he takes advantage of it. He doesn't hesitate, goes right through there. And Lois Grooms finally makes the tackle number 78. What do you mean by a seam? Any kind of room between two defensive players where you can run between them. Thank you. This time he goes to Barty. Close to a first down. I, I'm amazed, Hank. Last night as we watched the pictures of Green Bay, they certainly did not have the mechanical dexterity they're showing today. You know, it's, un it's unusual and, and it's very funny in a lot of respects because sometimes you'll see a team on film and be very, very unimpressed with them, and then you see them play and you're greatly impressed. That's what happened last night as we looked at this Green Bay team offensively. Either one of us was very impressed with the way they played, and yet they're most impressive this afternoon. Nicholas? Well, you know... There's no, really, Green Bay is doing something against New Orleans that Minnesota did last week. You know, Minnesota got beat by New Orleans 31 to 24, but in the process, Grant Tarkenton put up 428 yards and completed 28 out of 40 yards. So, I mean, that, that, they, it's not a great defensive team. Folks, this is nose to nose. Crowd told you. Henry? The offensive line at Darrell Goforth, Tim Stokes, uh, Larry McCare in the center, they're really coming off the ball very well and knocking that defensive line of the New Orleans Saints off the line of scrimmage, and it, they picked up the first down. Is, Bill, that, you, is that outside the 10? No, that's inside the 10. That's on about the 8.5, I think. Okay, what were you gonna say? Well, Barty Smith is never gonna elude anybody, but he'll run over some people. The man was illegally in motion. That pass will not count. Audra Thompson slipped and fell forward. They're gonna catch a five-yard penalty. Well, does that kill a drive, Bill? You know, you get, get everything going your way. You got all the momentum. You've got the backs running, breaking tackles. You have Whitehurst making great calls, play action passes, and then you have a five-yard penalty. That has to kill you. There was a gopher hole out there. It looked like he really ran in a gopher hole. Man was in motion, gopher hole, bingo, he falls forward. Well, what actually happened is he was going parallel to the line of scrimmage, and he mis misplayed the count. Watch, he's anticipating the count, which he shouldn't have done. That's what happened. He was anticipating going up this field before he was ready, and that's why he made the bad play. No gopher hole. Might have been a gopher hole, too, but... <laughs> no, <they're not. laughs> is, that, is that youth and inexperience, too? <laughs> yeah. Really? I mean, that's, that, that's the problem when you're playing young people. Remember, the Packers have 15 rookies on that ball club. They're kids. They're kids, the kiddie core. Thompson this time set to the right, Lofton the big man set to the left, and Whitehurst is going to throw the football. Swings it. Oh, did Barty get met? Pat Hughes made a great play. He anticipated, Pat Hughes, number 54, anticipated the screen. Watch it, he throws it to the second back. And actually, Middleton would have been wide open. You see him open on the inside. But Pat Hughes comes up, reads it well, makes a good open field tackle. Hey, Bill, wouldn't you know it? Another New York Giant reject, Pat there are, Hughes. There are a few <laughs> of them out here. We traded for him last year and, and gave up a 10th dra round draft choice, and he's been a regular for us since he joined the club. You know, this, obviously, in football games, as in any sport, you talk about moments of truth. There have been so many here, I'm going to stop using that phrase. The slot is to the right. Both wide receivers. Whitehurst is going to throw it to Lofton. Oh! oh what a what touchdown! What a, what a touch. play! Woo! Unbelievable catch. Just unbelievable. Whatever they paid that money for him to sign him was worth it just today. That was one of the most incredible catches I've seen in a long, long time. Woo! What Catch a again, player! Man. Here it is, a pocket pass there in a slot formation. The protection is good. He throws the ball. Watch, he, he has to go up oh. on top, over the top of his head, and makes the catch unbelievable. Oh. 
This will make it 21 to 10, and Mr. Lofton owns the afternoon. Marco is good as gold. There's a flag down on the play, however. It looks like New Orleans was offside. They'll decline the penalty, and of course, it'll be a point for the Green Bay Packers. Last week against Detroit, Lofton had one in his hands easy. He misses it. Today, in a situation like this, what a superb catch. Unbelievable. Here's to good friends. Here he goes. Tonight is kind of special. Hey, we almost gave up and sent out for peace. Sorry. All I could get were lobsters and low and brown. All I could get were lobsters and low and brown. <laughs> it's the last party of the summer. I figured I'd shoot the words. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Well, like the song says, here's to good friends. <laughs> Ford Futura, designed for the future. A dramatic combination of styling and technology for 1978 and beyond. Computer modeling and aerodynamic testing contribute to Futura's striking lines. Futura provides excellent fuel economy and room for five. Engineered and styled for the future, realistically priced for today. Test drive Futura at your Ford dealers, where the better ideas keep coming. New Orleans fans, don't blame Clarence Chapman for this because he had best coverage that you could possibly have on Lofton. But this is one of these catches that you just dream about going behind to make the snag. Lofton has earned his bucks today, Bill. Three catches, three touchdowns, shades of Don Hudson. Here's Chester Markle kicking from a 21-10 lead and puts it in play. And here's Mr. Chandler. Mr. Do-It-All, they slow him down and get him. Kid hasn't been able to do it yet today. Henry. You know, I, I saw him early in preseason, and he looked like he ran with a lot more uh, indecision. I, I, it doesn't appear that he's running with the same uh, fierce style that he Intensity. did early in, 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 in the games that I saw on television. Of course, that might be a little um, deceptive, too, but I, I get the feeling that he's not running with that reckless abandon that he did early in the season. Talk about Don Hudson. The record for Packers for Don Hudson was four TDs in one game. Well, so Lofton has his shot. You know, you only have 819 of the third quarter and the whole fourth quarter to go. 23-19. Mr. Manning now has a task for himself. They'll probably run to the left because they're overshifted to the right. See what happens. Okay. Against Here they the come stack. again. No, he's going to throw up a play pass action. He's going back to the right. Oh, Hank, they're in trouble. Mr. Barzalowskis smelled that from Connecticut. They fake the play action here. Watch this. They fake the play action, face fake the end around to Henry Childs, and then throw back to the far side of the field on a screen. You see? Mike Butler, 77, Hank, just smelled that thing out completely. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. They're getting a great rush, Bill, from that front four. They're coming off the ball beautifully. Now they are, like they did against the Lions last week. You're absolutely right, Nico. Manning's got to put it in the air. He's got time. He's got his man, and that Childs is tough. He's, a, he's, a, he's the guy they picked last year as their top offensive player over Muncie, and they picked him over Galbraith. Henry? This time they, they have good protection. Archie goes back in the pocket. The backs go out. And here you see him throw the ball right on the numbers to Henry Childs. Steve Luke makes the tackle. But a great uh, executed play by Henry Childs and also Archie Manning. Well, the ancient and honorables jumped out ahead of Philadelphia 28 to 10. Jack Pardee has really been bringing them along. The win over New England last week. Looks like they're going on against the Eagles this week. He's got Strawn in there now. Yes, he has. Thanks, Nick. Wing T to the right. He's going to throw. He's got, He's got a man all alone. He overthrew him. Oh. Boy, did he have Ike Harris that time wide open. He just threw the ball right over the top. And he he were... threw it over the top, as you said. Johnny Gray did the defensive job. But uh, Johnny, they took a sniff inside on the play action fake. Uh, Archie had plenty of time, but he just threw the ball over the top too long. Boy, he was wide open. Oh, man. 
Look but at Hank, Mr. Harris. Wouldn't you say that he had to throw the ball up and over the top? Because if he put it in a kind of an aligned drive, that could have been knocked down or intercepted. No, he had to throw it right over his head. Exactly, right. It had to be a perfectly thrown ball, and that's a tough throw. Steve Odom is back in a single safety. They coming against the kick of Chandler? They sure are. Kaufman almost got a piece of it again, but he hung it in the air. Good hang time. Odom wants it, though. Number 20 for the Saints is the man who made the play for him, Eric Felton, a 43-yard kick, and he made a, a super play on that. And the Packers, who have been reminiscent of the old days, have the ball, leading it by a score of 21 to 10. I don't know what it is, but there's something about a Big Mac that keeps me coming back. There's something about a Big Mac that keeps you coming back, keeps you coming back, coming back to that Big Mac. I'd hypothesize that it is definitely the lettuce. Is it the two all the patty, special sauce, lettuce and cheese? All the pickles and onions on a bun, could it be those sesame seeds? One thing is the two all-beef patties. That's two things, Bob. You, are the one who keep coming back. There's something about a Big Mac that keeps you coming back, keeps you coming back. Affirmed Aladar in Seattle, slew three of thoroughbred racing's competitors are expected to meet in the cup live. The telecast from Belmont Park in New York, the cup, the first of the full triple crown races. The three greats, affirmed Aladar in Seattle, slew. And also, the record makers, Alexeya, three world record holding weightlifters, challenged by several men from the United States. Here we go. That's Middleton. Oh, Here no. we go. Oh, no. oh, what a super play on defense. Hank, who finally got him? 37. Tommy, Tommy Myers. Tommy Myers, number 37, finally made the tackle. What a great cutback here, Hank. Isn't that a, a, against the traffic? Jim Merlo misses the tackle. Schwartz, number 48. Uh, gets upended, and Tommy Myers finally makes the tackle from the backside. You know, Bill, it looks like a real steal for Middleton, the third-round draft choice in 1977, and they're expending these draft choices in the first round. They can't come anywhere close to him. Barty Smith now. I want to tell you something. You told me at the beginning of the ball game, don't overlook the offensive line. That Green Bay offensive line right now is unbelievable. They're eating... The Saints alive on defense. Under the tutelage of Bill Curry, one of the great centers from Baltimore. He played here at Green Bay, then went to Baltimore, and I played against Bill for many a year. It was one of the, was one of the best centers in the National Football League, a real serious coach. Second down and three yards to go. To tell you the truth, I've never met one that wasn't serious. Oh, he's mixing it now. Smith's got the first down. New Orleans thinks they've got a fumble, do they? The umpire should be in charge of this one. First down, Green Bay. Henry, you and I heard last night when we went out all about the fact, hey, look at that, Dallas 21-14. We heard all about how the star was under pressure. He's answering a lot of critics today. Yes, he is. And, of course, Bart, I really think has done an excellent job here at Green Bay. It, it just takes time to get a program going and underway and successful. They go back to the tight end side with Middleton after showing that slot right. That's what you told me last night. You run it to the left and throw it to the right. Well, the power of the formation is a slot formation, which means that you have both receivers on the right side or the left side of the ball. It's strong passing-wise to that side, but strong running-wise back to the tight end side, which they ran last time. You know, one thing you can't do is you can't come up second and six and second and five if you're going to play defense. Because this gives the offensive quarterback many opportunities and many alternatives. Nate Simpson's in there now. But it's Barty Smith. Tell me about Smith, Nick. What kind of a ball player? Well, they talk about Barty Smith. He was the first-round draft choice out of Richmond. 
Barty Smith is a type of quarterback that, I mean, uh, fullback that's going to give you everything he has. Now, he's not elusive. He's not a game breaker, but he doesn't make any mistakes. And that's what the key to the thing is. You've got to have someone who's going to play every play without making mistakes. He's the guy for the Packers. He's really a sledgehammer back. Marv Phillips at Kansas City getting an introduction of Bum Phillips. 6-3 Houston. The I formation. Couldn't do it, but there's a flag on a play, and it could be defensive holding. Simpson carried the football. He's giving Middleton a bit of a rest. It's so warm out here today. Nick, how warm is it out there today? Sounds like a Johnny Carson bit. <laughs> Bill, I, now we used to love this weather in Miami. When we used to get teams down there in the Orange Bowl and it was a sweltering 100 degrees, we used to look over to the bench of the opponents and watch them with ice bags on their head, feet immersed in ice water. I mean, guys just hanging on, sucking up the oxygen. Here, it's not quite as bad as it is in the Orange Bowl, but it's brutal. Number 54, offense holding, third down. Chuck Heberling gave it to you. The offense was holding. Is it true you'd prefer in a situation like this to get your team ready in a sauna, Hank? <laughs> well, I tell you, when you live and, and work in New Orleans, why, you're almost in a sauna because it's very hot and humid for practices there. Third down and 13 yards to go for the pack. This kid loves to run. I, I'm going to use the word. I'm sorry. He's got guts. He really does. Congratulations, Bill. You mean I made a, a magnificent... You've made it. You've joined the locker room crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on it for two nights with you guys. Here's, a, here's an interesting thing now. You watch the punter. You see if he'll kick it. He should try to kick it out of bounds to his left rather than to his right. If it goes out of bounds to the left, why, uh, chances are if he makes a bad kick, then it's going to go right down the middle. It's not a wasted kick. If he tries to kick it to his right and he squibs it, it could be a very bad kick. He should kick it out of bounds to the left. See what happens. Okay, Chandler is the man that's deep. You're right, he's going left. What a Chandler show. Oh, what a gorgeous kick. And Chandler showed fair catch. I don't know what for. What a kick by Beverly. Oh, Green Bay is doing it all. They have resurrected the pass. 21 to 10. The 1978 Ford Pinto. With standard features like these, it's packed with value. A 2.3-liter engine, a four-speed transmission, rack and pinion steering, power front disc brakes, electric defroster, AM radio, tinted glass and bucket seats. And since the 77 model year, redesigned fuel system features that include a longer filler pipe and polyethylene shield. Ford Pinto, over two and a half million sold since introduction. Ford Pinto, a complete small car. Aerosol, not an economical way to apply deodorant. In fact, you'd use up this four ounce can of the leading aerosol, buy another, use it up, buy a third, use it up, before you'd use up one two and a half ounce speed stick. Men and speed stick is solid deodorant, an even effective layer of protection you apply directly. Nothing's wasted. That's why three million more Americans took our advice. They got off the can, they got on the stick. This Sunday, the preview of Kaz, an ex-con trying to make it against tough odds. I need a job. Ron Lieben stars with Patrick O'Neill Sunday on Kaz.